All right. Uh, thank you for the invitation, Sydney. And um, it's really exciting to be here this afternoon because I think you're you're here because you're interested in potentially taking my chem chemistry 155 course, and um, and I'm also very interested to have you as students in my course. And so I can start out by giving a little description of what this course is about. The name of the course is Scientific Programming for Chemistry. And this is being offered this coming fall. It's a three unit upper division course. Um, you can see the course times there. We meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 310. And the, and the main purpose of this course is that um, is that programming is programming and using computers is just becoming more and more important every year for science and engineering and chemistry is really no exception to that. And so this course is mainly intended to teach you these um, scientific programming and computational skills kind of in a chemistry context, but the skills that you learn can really be applied in, in any industry, um, no matter uh, whether you're planning on going to, you know, going into grad school um, in a field that could be chemistry or it could be different from chemistry or going into industry um, or whatever your you know, career goals are. I am sure that if your future work has anything to do with computers, that this course can benefit you. Um, and there's many programming languages and we had to make some decisions on what to teach. And so, um, so we're teaching this class using the Python language and um, and something called the Jupyter Notebook environment that I will give a little demonstration for. And um, something, um, something that a new student might find daunting about a class like this is that you know it seems kind of advanced and complicated. And you know, are there like are they going to are there prerequisites for this class? Or if you come into this class with no programming skills. You know, are you being you know set up to not not succeed? And I I, I want to say that if you come into this class with no programming um, no programming experience, you can absolutely succeed. Okay, um, we have no prerequisites um, for you know for some formal bureaucratic reasons. We say that ECS 32A is recommended, but it is not required. And I don't want that statement to discourage you from enrolling in this class. Um, as a matter of fact, the last time I gave this class in fall 2022, um, I had about half of the students, um, you know, tell me they were concerned because they didn't have prior programming experience. And we spent the first two weeks on teaching programming basics, and we still got through all of our topics. So, um, so I'm so I'm confident that. Um, that, that if this happens again, it will, you know, it will not be a problem at all. It will go even more smoothly than it did last time. So I'm not worried about it, that at all. Um, but after getting through the first two weeks of basic programming, these are the topics that we will cover. And these, uh, the topics that are kind of in this list here are also kind of, you know, represented in these uh, figures here. So you're going to learn how to perform like data analysis and visualization. And you know, particularly if you do experiments, this is going to be an important skill because you want to be able to you know fit uh, lines and curves to your experimental data and make um, and make graphics that can go into your publications, right? So so that will be pretty important. Um, there is is also um, there is also a kinetics unit where um, where I'm going to show you how to use um, how to use programming to solve these coupled differential equations that where, where you can learn, you know, how, um, how concentrations of species can vary over time, just showing you, you know, kind of, you know, what, um, what computation can do when you don't have like the analytic solution. And then, um, and then there are some like more direct applications of programming to chemistry. So, so these topics include like cheminformatics. This is how you represent molecules on a computer, either in terms of just the, the, the chemical bonds in the atoms or as three-dimensional structures. And also two important classes of, of uh, calculations that we can do in computational chemistry 
So namely quantum chemistry and molecular dynamics. We're going to spend about two or three weeks total on these two topics. And lastly, um, if you have been following current events, you know that everybody is simultaneously excited and concerned about artificial intelligence these days. And in the last uh, week or two of this course, I'm going to teach you the basic concepts behind artificial intelligence and show you how to build a simple machine learning model in your Jupyter notebook. Um, and that will and that will basically close out the course contents. Um, another, another thing that I'd like to mention, but I don't have a slide for, is, um, is like what kinds of what kinds of assignments and exams you'll have in this class. So, so first, there's no exams. Um, there are um, there is a total of four graded assignments. I'll, I'll, I'll correct myself. There's four. There's four graded assignments that are um, that are we call them projects. That means that they're that means they're relatively long assignments and a little bit more open ended. And then um, and then you can you know you can work with a partner or in groups on this. And you can also you know come to office hours and ask us questions about them. So there's four graded projects, and then the final project is a little bit longer, and it's supposed to integrate the you know, various topics that you've learned. And then we also have four much shorter exercises, which are just, um, um, which are more like practice problems with, you know, with uh, that, you know, with very well-defined solutions. So really the, really the bulk of the work is in these four graded projects. Um, yeah, and, and so, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say the workload for this course is not is not very heavy. Um, this is you know this is an elective course, and mainly you know mainly to get you interested in programming or build up your skills in programming. So um, so we're not we're, we're also not going to you know enforce like very strict grading standards or anything like that. And um, I'd also like to show you a little bit about what the course materials looks like and. I'm not going to uh, actually dive into the topics, but I want to. Um, but I, but I do want to show you, um, like what what the what the readings are like, what the lectures are like, and so I will start. Uh, I will cut over to my browser here, and so first, um, you can see that 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 this web page here, this um, uh, this represents about half of our course material. You can think of this web web page as being the replacement for the textbook and um and so for example like this this web page you can see you can see it's a uh, you know it's it's fairly long if you if you look at the you know the scroll bar on the right um, but i wrote this entire thing myself um and it's and it's intended to um to teach you the basics of programming assuming that you didn't know anything about programming in the beginning and, and that's kind of one of the challenges of teaching programming, having a few years of experience, because it's very easy to forget what it is like to not know how to program once you've learned it. Um, but I think that after you know a few years of you know thinking about this and refining these materials, um, we, we've had we've had some success, you know, in uh, you know, in training students with no experience into becoming skilled programmers. And there's there's about uh, there's 10 weeks worth of content here. So for example, if you um, if you click on week two, we're going to be talking about you know visualizations starting with hydrogen atomic orbitals. And then in week three, we're going into statistical analysis of data. And then we'll get into the computational chemistry kind of like in week seven through nine. Um, as for the Jupyter notebook environment, um, the the programming that we do is literally in the web browser, so you can see that inside these cells here, this is uh, this is real, genuine Python code. But because you're in this web browser environment, it's a little bit more user friendly compared to just using a text editor and a command line. Um, what's more, um, what's more, you're, I'm going to guide you through how to install this environment onto your computer, so that um, so that when you're working through the problem sets, or even when you're in lecture you can follow along by typing in the codes as I talk about them and showing 
that it works for yourself and not just working for me on my computer. So um, I haven't run this in a while, so I can't guarantee that it works. Um, so I'm 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 not going to uh, not going to push my luck here, but um, but I'll just show you the the existing outputs from a previous lecture where I um, where I demonstrate how to you know how to train a neural network. In this case, the model is intended to distinguish the red dots from the blue dots. Okay, um, so kind kind of a simple application, but you know that's you know sim simple is where we start by learning how to you know, deal with these complicated models. Um, so, so yeah, that is, that is all I had prepared and, you know, I'm more than happy to take your, take your questions at this point, if you have any questions. Good. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Does anyone have any questions or if you want to ask them in the chat? I can ask, I have a question actually. Um, so I'm actually registered for the class in fall. Um, and I'm oh, excited great. to it. Yeah. Um, so is it all Python or do we ever get into like any R programming or anything like that? Um, at the, at the moment, this course is all Python. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. But I, but I think that, but I think that a lot of the, uh, um, a lot of the concepts such as, um, such as like object oriented programming transfer mm -hmm. over to many different languages, like the, the concept of like an object that has like methods and attributes and you know uh, classes and things like that those uh those concepts are transferable yeah, definitely okay thank you sure there's a question in the chat how long do the projects usually take to complete i'd say each project is about two weeks so there so, so there are weeks where there aren't any projects but for the majority of the course there is usually like a like a project that is you know that is kind of in the background that's going to be due either like two weeks or you know or one week from from now and then during that time I'll be teaching you the concepts that are needed to work on the project so you can either work on the project on your own or you can um, or you can come to the office hours to to work on the projects um, yeah yeah and yeah, about about two weeks, and I think the final project is a little bit longer. I think I think that you might have three weeks to do that one. You're welcome. Any other questions? I guess not. Yeah, I um one well, one thing you might be interested in is like whether the course content will be re recorded. Uh, the answer is yes. I usually um, what I usually like to do is I will um, I will use my computer to record my screen as I'm you know as I'm giving you know as I'm giving the lectures so that so that if I talk too fast you know you can always go on Canvas and see the videos there. Um, I also I always upload any like Jupyter notebooks or any files that I work with on the computer so that you can always you know go back home and review them. Yeah, that sounds great. That's always really helpful in a, a computer science class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't think there are any other questions. Uh, I will like personally vouch, I guess, for this class. I so I uh, just want to share really quickly that I did take this class uh, last spring quarter with Dr. Wong, and um, it's definitely been a very helpful class, both in like my learning of like chemistry, but also especially applying programming um, and like like it's I think, like dynamics to like my research and to the work that I have. And I definitely say the skills that you learn here are very transferable to both like your research and uh, like as Dr. Wong said, anything to do with computers can be very transferable to that. So. If you are interested in taking this class, you know, as a student, I will say that it's a very fun class. <laughs> so I would strongly consider adding it to your fall quarter schedule, especially since, you know, past times are coming up right now. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, Jason. It means, means a lot to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
If you don't have any other additional questions or concerns, uh, we'll stop the recording here. Uh, but um, I want to thank uh, you, Dr. Wong, for showing up today and everyone else here. They're also showing up to uh, learn a little bit more about the class. And um, yeah, if you have any last words, Dr. Wong, feel free to share them. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Just just one last thing. I've got my email address okay. up on the slide here. So if you want to ask me something afterward, you can just take down that email address and send me an email and I can, you know, I can reply to any questions you have. I've also put it into the chat. Oh, whoops, I only sent that to Sydney. Um, I'll put it into the chat as well in case you want to <laughs> copy and paste it. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you all for showing up today. Really thank appreciate you, everyone. it. Thanks a lot and happy Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can stop the recording now.